Hi guys, Hounds Armor here, and today we are inside because it is raining. That being said, please let, let me know what you think about this setup. I know this is kind of the more generic Nerf YouTube channel setup, the top-down view on the workbench, um, which mine is nice and clean right now, and I'm going to try to keep it that way. Um, today, we're talking about, well, not this. But this is where we're starting because this is what is being replaced. Um, this is one of my two Sweet Revenges. I have two identical ones that have nothing but a spring, sp uh, a spring spacer in the back here. And most of the paint sanded off because I kind of like the way it looks this way. And it's good and reliable and it's consistent. And well, that's what I look for in a sidearm. Uh, and f for a while, I wanted to get my hands on a thing. I don't know if it's in, it's in frame right now because I don't can't see the frame. But I've been wanting to get my hands on one of these. The Worker Hurricane. Oh, get this. The new one. Now, beyond being one dart, being able to carry and fire one dart more than the Sweet Revenge's stock, which of course I'm using the stock cylinder right now, um, it's semi-auto. And reliable as all get out because it's simple this is one of the simplest flywheeler mechanisms I've ever seen it's simpler than the strife because it has less parts it's way simpler than the Raven because it has less parts and the whole mechanisms smaller um, not to mention things like the rapid strike and the hyper fire and like the Percy's and even my own HVZ primary which is a very complicated build internally um, it is super simple, therefore super reliable, and the only downside is it takes batteries and motors, which you can't use on damp days like today where there's water that wants to kill your flywheels. Anywho, um, <laughs> that would probably be the only situation on rainy days like this that I would go back to this as my sidearm. Now, does that mean I'm going to stop carrying my Sweet Revenges as my primary sidearms? No! Um, simply because I really like them and they're super comfortable and uh, they're fun to use. If you want to go max efficiency and effectiveness, which I do sometimes, I think this is the way to go. Yes, you can go things like the, um, what is it, the Desert Pigeon route where you get the, the full modern um, handgun feel with the uh, magazine through the grip and the easy to holster, compact, semi-compact, those things aren't small, feel. Um, and do I plan to make something like that and test it out and try it as I said, um, yes. But I can't right now because I can't get my hands on PLA. So, we're talking about stock blasters. Well, except not stock because it's weird because Workers sells a 3S LiPo and advertises the fact that this can easily take a 3S LiPo, so it's currently running on a 3S LiPo. Though it can run on two AA's, two IMR's, two S, and 3S LiPo's. All very happily. Um, now I don't own any IMR's, and I don't own a 2S LiPo small enough to fit in the grip, so I've only tried it on the two AA's and the 3S LiPo, which are the two ends of the spectrum. And I will say, it's not awful on two double A's, but it's not exactly good or very usable. You have to sit um, at the partial trigger point where you've unclicked the uh, switch for a, for a good two seconds, or when you pull the trigger, you're gonna jam the blaster. Um, which is why I'm really curious if Worker only did that so that they can still claim it being a toy, because this thing was obviously meant to be run on 3S. Um, the torque and the, the these motors are just so perfectly tuned in that you barely need any rev up time to get to full rev, and even if you don't have time for that, if you just f smoothly pull the trigger, the dart will come out the blaster with a good bit of distance. Um, of course, not full distance, but very usable. Um, and it likes being on 3S. It almost sings. Like, it, oh, it does have a safety, which is a nice feature. Like, 
Come on. It's great. Now let me talk a bit about why it's a good sidearm, and I'm going to do a video on sidearms. I'm picking a sidearm for my um, loadout series. Link to that playlist in the description below. Um, but I just want to touch on why this is such a good one and compare us and compare it to my current gold or my former gold standard. So first of all, why is this the gold standard? It's reliable. You prime it, you pull the trigger, our dart goes. You can you can leave it primed in a holster all day and it will be perfectly happy. And then when you need it, you pull it, you draw it, you pull the trigger, and a dart goes. It's as simple as that. This sadly takes a battery, which adds complexity just on the maintenance and the being able to use it side, but it sits here. And then you draw it and you pull the trigger, and it goes. Just like this. Because the internal mechanism is so simple, um, the current comparison is obviously um, MHP's uh, Magpie. And I have one up um, by my printer that I'm working on right now. The, ob the reason that's such an obvious comparison is that they're both six shot flywheel pseudo revolvers. That one is definitely a revolver. This is technically a rotary magazine, but I'm not splitting hairs. That is a much more complicated mechanism that is not nearly as reliable, though it does have some added functionality, which is nice. I'll talk about that hopefully in its own video as well as in the sidearm video. Now, why the Hurricane beats the hammer shot or whatever, your hammer prime sidearm, is the follow-up shot. Um, I've got two darts left here. So, let's just do this on camera. So, so it's even. I don't have my holsters here. We'll say on the table is holstered. I will pick it up, I will shoot a dart that way, and then I will shoot a follow-up shot. So, with a sweet revenge. Not bad. Uh, you know, first shot comes out, comes off as soon as I'm on target, and the follow shot, up shot's not too far off. Now with the hurricane. Yeah, it's fast, and that's why it's great. <laughs> um, not to mention, it's just so small and compact and super easy to use. The follow-up shots you can get off, um, and like you saw there, I didn't give it any time to rev. I just started pulling the trigger, and all the darts came out with some pretty good snap. I'm hopefully bouncing back across frame. Um, for reference here, my wall is like three feet, two and a half feet away. Um, so yeah, it's a pretty great sidearm. It has one more advantage. For my hammer shots and sweet revenges, I have the Blaster Parts small uh, universal holsters. Um, if you want more details on what my loadout is, I'll put my... Uh, loadout video in the description below as well. And those cost me like $22 to $25 a piece. Um, and again, if you're interested in them, I can put the link in the description for those as well. But the great thing about this is it has its own holster. And it's this little thing. That is Molly, whereas the blaster part ones aren't. You can only get them in the drop leg variety. And it works just perfectly. Not to mention this pouch was also designed to use the Dominator 40 round magazines and some water bottles. Um, and so what I'm currently working on, my current loadout, is adding this pouch as my backup water um, cup holder. When I'm not running a hurricane, of course. Um, I'm sorting out some things with my loadout now that I have a hurricane, that things might change. So I might have to do an update video on my loadout before, sooner than I expected. But that's not what we're talking about here. This pouch, this holster, is 10 bucks. Um, and I think I'm just gonna put links in the descriptions to Out of Darts' store so you can go find all the stuff I'm talking about because that's easier for me. It's more work for you. But I'm a little lazy, so you can live with it. And this together, comboed, if you already have the battery and the XT60 connector and the soldering iron and everything, it's $35 for the pair. For a sweet revenge, you're lucky to get them for about 15 bucks, and then it's another 25 bucks for the holster, so that's at least 40 bucks. 
Meh, that was loud. So this, with the more capacity, easy, this is one of the easiest LiPo mods ever because you don't have to touch anything. This is stock wiring, stock switches, stock everything. Even the little safety switch on the back still works. This is one of the easiest LiPo soldering mods ever because you just have to undo two connections down here, slap on an XT60 connector or an XT30, which I think is what the worker official battery uses. But for most of the rest of the hobby, we use XT60, so I would just suggest, suggest using the XT60. Anyway, that's a ramble. Um, in general, this is a great sidearm. So is this. This is there's no, this is not changed. This is just new and gives you different functionality and is better in most ways. That being said, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for watching this far. If you've gotten this far into this kind of rambly video of me sitting in my workshop while it's raining outside. Um, if you did last this long, please like and subscribe. It helps the channel a lot. I am quickly growing and every day I am just shocked by how well my channel is doing. So please leave a comment, uh, ask questions. If you just like have a little comment, I like that too. Um, I'm trying to respond to all of my comments because you'll leave some great comments. Anyway, I should stop talking. I should let you get on with your day. So thank you so much for watching. Uh -huh.